Today I'm going to talk about parallel structure in your writing. It's something you should uh, pay attention to whenever you have a list. Uh, this can be a list, an actual list of bullets or number points, or just a list of things in, uh, in a sentence. So, what is it? Well, parallel structure involves using uh, the same syntactic category, if possible, when it, whenever you're joining things with a conjunction. And by syntactic category, I mean the part of speech or the larger you know, phrasal category that we have. The conjunctions I'm talking about are the coordinating conjunctions, uh, and, but, and, or, primarily. Also, the correlative conjunctions, not only, but also, either, or, neither, nor. And no conjunction at all, if you just have uh, a list of you know, numbered or bulleted items. So why should we use parallel structure? Well, sometimes not using it is actually uh, bad grammar. You'll have one item in a list that actually doesn't fit with uh, something, you know, the, the part of the sentence that introduced it when it's all by itself. Other times, uh, you, will, you will have a grammatical sentence, but it won't mean what you think. And you'll have an unintended meaning. In any case, Parallel structure is easier for the readers to follow. Using it also forces you to think more clearly about what you're writing, and that's always a good thing. And uh, finally, if you're writing a resume, you will definitely want to know about parallel structure when you're writing all those lists of uh, achievements and uh, places you've worked and other things. So, let's start with a textbook example of faulty parallel structure. It's usually something short like this. I like swimming and to dance. You have a gerund and a, an infinitive coordinated here. Now, actually, in my opinion, the grammar here is fine because I like swimming is grammatical and so is I like to dance. But there's, these are clearly different forms and they're so near each other and it would be so easy to make them sound better and look better by making them parallel that you should really do it as a matter of style. So you can write, I like swimming and dancing, where you have gerund and gerund. Or you could say, I like to swim and to dance, where you have infinitive and infinitive. Or you could even take out the repeated to and have, I like to swim and dance, and just coordinate the base form swim and the base form dance. Although this does have an additional meaning. Uh, this just means I like to swim and I like to dance. This can mean that, but it can also mean that swimming and dancing together as an activity, you like that. You like to swim and dance at the same time. So take your choice. In any case, all three of these bottom options are now parallel. Now you may be thinking, well, who would ever write a sentence like that bad example? I mean, that's so obviously awkward that you'd never write it, right? Uh, well, maybe not. Uh, so does that mean you don't need to worry about parallel structure? You just unconsciously know it already. Uh, well, not quite. Some, some cases are a little sneakier, and you have to watch out for them. So here's a more realistic example of faulty parallel structure from a student piece of writing. He told me to remember to go back there and picked up my phone in 15 minutes. And then another one, uh, it is up to each state to make a decision on whether abortions can be performed in cases of rape, incest, or if the mother's life is in danger. Now that's a sentence that comes up in many, many news reports about this uh, political and uh, uh, human rights issue that uh, is, is always in the news. So uh, well, let's take a look and see exactly where the non-parallelism is. And to do that, we're going to pause for a moment and move to a Microsoft Word document where I can edit these. Okay, so here we are. I've copied the sentence down here, and I've put a palette up here of uh, two forms, finite verb phrase, in other words, something with uh, tense, like present tense or past tense, and base form verb phrase. So, to look for a parallel, parallel structure, Look for your conjunction. Here it is. And then I'd like to look at the last thing after it. Picked up my phone in 15 minutes. Okay. 
So that's, uh, that's a finite verb phrase. Actually, I think I just want picked up my phone. So finite verb phrase. We have uh, past tense here, so we're going to color it green. So now, on this side, we need to find another finite verb phrase, something else with a tense, maybe past, something else. Well, go back there. No, that's, that's a base form verb phrase. To go back there, that's an infinitive. Remember to go back there, that's a base form. To remember to go back there, another infinitive. And finally, told me to remember to go back there. There's our other finite verb phrase. So this is a parallel finite verb phrase and finite verb phrase, but it doesn't mean what the writer intended for it to mean. The writer, right now, it says that he did two things. He told me something, and he picked up my phone. But the writer actually intended for this to say that he told me something, and then me, I'm the one who remembers to go back there and pick up my phone. Okay. So let's undo the coloring here. He told me what? To remember to go back there. Okay, so that's a base form verb phrase. And let's find a base form verb phrase here. Well, of course, there isn't one, as we know. We have a finite verb phrase. The way we fix that is we just turn that into the base form. And now it's parallel. He told me to do two things. One, remember to go back there, and two, pick up my phone. By the way, you may have noticed that actually this could be coordinated with this base form verb phrase and not the bigger one. This sentence is syntactically ambiguous. We just don't uh, know fully. To my mind, it makes a little more sense to say it this way. He told me to remember to do th two things, go back there and pick up my phone. Okay. But in any case, now it's nice and parallel with two base form verb phrases. So let's take a look at the other one. Okay, so for this sentence, I've created a palette with noun phrase, prepositional phrase, and subordinate clause. First, let's remove the part that uh, is not relevant to us here. And now let's look for the conjunction. There it is. And on the right side of or, if the mother's life is in danger. So that's a subordinate clause. The clause is the mother's life is in danger. This if turns it into a subordinate clause. Right? OK, so now do we have a subordinate clause on this side of the or? Well, actually we do. Uh, weather can turn this whole thing into a subordinate clause, but that doesn't really make sense. This whole thing is uh, talking about situations in which abortions can be performed. We want, we would like all of this to be inside this whole weather clause here. So this is too far. In fact, let's just get the weather out of there so it's not confusing things. Right? So there is no subordinate clause on this side now. Um, what is there? It's, it's the, the author is trying to talk about situations when abortions can be performed. So they can be performed in this case, rape. In this case, incest. Well, these are, these are noun phrases. Or if the mother's life is in danger. So what we really need to do is turn this into a noun phrase. So how do we do that? Well, um, let's see, maternal life endangerment, um, mother's life. You, you have to be a little creative here. How about um, threat? Oh, my. Uh, threat. OK. Having a little technical difficulties here. Threat to the mother's life. And while I wait for the cursor to catch up, uh, I can look for my, my green color here. OK, here we go. So that would work. Noun, or noun phrase, noun phrase, or noun phrase. 
I've never actually heard it phrased this way, though. So let's suppose that you would rather keep it as a subordinate clause. If the mother's life is in danger. So what are we going to do here? Well, uh, wait for the cursor to catch up, first of all. Okay, so now it's back to noun phrase, noun phrase, subordinate clause. Now is when we need to think a bit beyond parallelism, where we might not have the same structure. I'm going to say we have two things happening here. They're both phrases that modify the verb. They don't have the same syntactic category. One's a prepositional phrase, and one is a subordinate clause, but they're both doing the same kind of job. So this would basically work except for one thing. This first list item contains a smaller list inside it, a list of two items. That list needs a conjunction. So now it's parallel. Now you may be wondering, well, wait a minute, I've, I've repeated the or. I shouldn't do that, right? I should, I, should, I should turn this one into a comma. No. This or is doing one job. It's coordinating a noun phrase and a noun phrase. This or is doing another job. It's joining this entire adverb-like phrase and this entire adverb-like phrase. In fact, I should pr probably give that a label here. Adverb-like phrase. There we go. Okay, so if you can understand this case of non-parallel structure, uh, congratulations. You have uh, you studied advanced parallel structure uh, beyond even the abilities of uh, many native English writers who you know say this and or write it and uh, never realize that, that things aren't quite parallel. So if you can do that, uh, congratulations and uh, best of luck in maintaining parallel structure in all your writing.